Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, so, uh, issue 85 of War Games Soldiers and Strategy is going to be coming out really soon. And the theme this time around takes a look at uh, uh, monsters of myth and legend. And we've got a whole bunch of creatures being covered uh, from, you know, zombies to more traditional sort of D&D style monsters to uh, things like Alien or uh, Terminator or those kinds of critters. Um, so I thought it would be fun kind of to go along with that to uh, paint a new monster figure for you. So I've picked out this kind of neat old school um, mummy model. This is by War Games Fact or Foundry, sorry, War Games Foundry. And it's, 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 it's one of their, definitely one of their older models. It's part of their casting room range, but he, he's just, I think he's neat and characterful. He kind of reminds me of the Iron Maiden uh, mascot. Um, so I'm going to be showing you how to do him. This should be a pretty simple model, but I think it'll be both easy and fun to paint and also produce some nice results. Um, so anyway, if you are interested in checking out the latest issue of WSS, I'm going to link to it below in the description box. You can find out more on our web shop. Uh, and also, uh, to go along with this issue, we're releasing kind of a bonus uh, online scenario. It's a PDF. You can download it. Uh, for free from our website, and th that scenario is basically uh, for like these 19th century adventurers going into the Amazon and going to a lost city and getting in a fight with like this Cthulhu-like monster. Uh, so it's a lot of fun, and that's totally free. Uh, everything you need is there, so you can download that right now if you want. So I will uh, link to that um, in the description box below as well. So, okay, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so as usual, here are all the colors you're going to need for this model, and I know it probably seems like quite a few for such a simple figure, but do remember we have to do the skin tone here, and because this is more of a fantasy kind of figure, you want to integrate some sort of bright, uh, more vibrant uh, colors, and even if there aren't going to be very big areas of those colors, you're still going to need, you know, a fair number of paints to kind of do them properly. Because they want a kind of a dry, dark, desiccated look on the mummy's skin, I'm going to be base coating these areas here using um, leather brown. Now my first highlight here on the skin is going to be with uh, Vallejo Saddle Brown. If you've seen a mummy unwrapped in a museum or whatever, you know they have this often sort of very dark, almost black brown skin. They look really desiccated. And I'm kind of going to duplicate that though. And I'm, I'm not going to make them quite so black or brown. I want to get like a little bit more life in there and I want to give them sort of this reddish uh, complexion, this mummy that is. Uh, so that's why I'm working with the saddle brown here as my highlighting color because that really is going to help build in that red. Uh, next, I felt like it was kind of a good idea to reinforce uh, the shadows on this model a bit more, so I took some German camouflage black-brown, which is really dark, and with a skin tone like this, you though, you're really going to need it. So you can't like use the red or black-red, for example, which I use on a normal skin tone, because it's just not going to give you enough contrast. So I'm going with the German camouflage black-brown here instead. Uh, and you know, again, this is pretty straightforward. You're just going to be, you know, wanting to put it in places like in the mouth, eye sockets, around the eyebrows, and just kind of picking those areas out inside the hollow where his nose used to be, between the fingers, you know. Uh, again, it, it, this face is very easy to paint. You really just kind of follow uh, the lines that it almost paints itself. Uh, now, so my next highlight, I'm taking a saddle brown, and now I'm going to mix in some German camouflage pale brown. Uh, I chose that color because uh, it's kind of, it's definitely lighter, but it's, it, it's, it's a dustier kind of uh, faded brown, but it's still got a little bit of that red cast to it, uh, which makes it nice, I think, for lightening uh, up my shade. And I've, I've put in a considerable amount of it here, uh, you know, really just to get it uh, quite a bit lighter, but I'm keeping the paint thin. I don't want to put it on too thick yet. And again, I'm just really now carefully going back over those areas where uh, I want light to be hitting the face and, you know, just really following all those outlines and contours that you kind of see there. Um, at this point, uh, I decided to 
go a little bit further with lightening and I, I couldn't really use the, the pale brown anymore for that because uh, adding more of it really wouldn't have made the color much lighter. It was gonna kind of stay the same. So now I've taken some Iraqi sand and I'm using that to get my color lighter. Uh, at this point, I'm really starting to kind of really just kind of dot the color on a lot more. Uh, and one thing is because the skin, you want it to look wrinkled uh, and desiccated, you know, you, you're, it's kind of nice in some areas to just really dot it on or apply sort of fine uh, lines, especially like around the lips and the nose and those kind of areas and the eyebrows kind of dotting it a little bit. And that gives you the kind of this more wrinkled effect that's going to look good on this kind of skin. And that whole process gets even more easier here. I've just added even more of the Iraqi sand in uh, to get a really, really bright mix. Um, this is gonna be kind of, on most areas of the skin, kind of my top highlight. Uh, I'm not completely done, but uh, mostly you don't wanna go too much higher than this because remember, we still wanna preserve that kind of dark brown, uh, desiccated skin tone. Uh, and if we over highlight here, uh, it's, it's not gonna look good anymore. Uh, one thing that's really making this easier and kind of saving us a lot is because there's such high contrast between a lot, all the wrinkles and lines on the face and those are keep, we're keeping those dark. So that makes it a lot easier still to, to, to keep that look going even though we're highlighting quite bright in some areas. I finally got just a little bit of pure Iraqi sand and I'm really just dotting this in some very select areas sort of to add some extra emphasis to the wrinkles around the mouth uh, and cheeks and eyebrows and just maybe a few dots uh, again on the knuckles and hands but this you really I'm, you, want, you don't want to put much on and you don't really want to blend it out you should kind of just use this to put some real uh, fine uh, spot highlights here and there. Now the overall skin tone has gotten pretty tan in the end and I want to really still bring back in more of that red. So I've got some cardboard crimson here and I'm going to apply a, a wash to the skin. I'm going to keep that uh, real um, even and relatively thin. Uh, you can go heavier and darker obviously down in the creases, uh, but certainly on the highlighted areas you want to make it a fairly, not too uh, deep a coat because you you know you don't want to totally muddle, muddy up your highlights. But this really adds, I feel like, an extra dimension and an extra sort of lifeliness to the face. Uh, you can then go back in a little bit with some of the Iraqi sand again to sort of re-highlight some areas that got lost a little bit of definition and just pick them out a little bit further. Now I have to admit that, as I said in the beginning, uh, this figure has really reminded me of the Iron Man <laughs> mascot and I'm finding more and more as I go along painting this that it's kind of inspiring my uh, color choices and some of the decisions. So I'm giving him glowing red eyes too. I just dotted on some of the fist on red here and then highlighted with uh, just a dot of Evil Sun Scarlet over top of that. And then finally I just took a tiny dot of white just to add a slight reflection. This shouldn't be too difficult to paint because these this, these are very fairly large cartoony eyes so you don't have to be you know too perfect here now under the mummy wrappings um, I'm using Iraqi sand here is my base coat uh, because it's going over black and you've got a really a lot of sort of uh, you know deep sculpted areas on this model uh, the paint's gonna tend to kind of pool down in those areas and kind of not create the surface very well so, I mean, with a light color like this, you'd have to apply uh, several coats anyway, but here you really, really do. So I'm applying the first coat here, but as soon as that, this is dry, I'm then gonna go back in and kind of reapply until I've got a nice, smooth, even layer everywhere. And now because I'm really going for that sort of yellow tone wrappings, I'm gonna be using a, a pretty heavy wash here everywhere of uh, Citadel Seraphim Sepia. Uh, and you know just I'm really really slopping that on here and that gives sort of a nice yellowish brown cast to everything. Now the next step is going to really be highlighting the wrappings and this is about as laborious a process as you would expect and it's it's not really particularly hard uh, assuming you have um, good brush control you don't really have to do a lot of blending here you know you're just kind of painting the tops of the wrappings in most cases and especially if you keep your paint somewhat uh, thin 
uh, you can kind of apply it in a, a very sort of transparent layer and then go back in later and put a heavier layer on to build up sort of different tonal areas. But mostly, this is really just about being careful and uh, precise and not losing patience and starting to get sloppy. Uh, it does help to use a smaller brush. I've got a number zero here. Uh, I find it just makes painting the wrappings um, a lot easier. And this color I'm working with here, by the way, uh, is beige from Vallejo. When I started out, I, I had it a little bit too thick a mix and I, it was going on too strong. So later I uh, thinned it down a bit so it was a little more transparent. And that's actually uh, really good with this because you know you probably don't want it to get too bright too fast. You, want that extra sort of control and you know I just kind of went around did each side of the figure and then turned the figure kind of and you know just kept rotating around and doing each side and then when I was done I as I said I went back and kind of found some select areas that I wanted to highlight a bit more and uh, did that made them a little bit brighter uh, uh, just lighten them up further uh, and there are a few areas where you might want to blend some paint in just because the wash got really, really dark and you want to sort of tone that down so it doesn't look uh, too stark. Now actually, I think compared to the face, uh, painting the wrappings is a lot more straightforward. I mean, it took a lot longer, but that's just purely due to how much area there was to cover and you know the care you had to take but there are much less colors and actually very few layers being used here and my uh, second highlight is just now going to be the beige with some white mixed in about 50 50 i'd say <clears throat> and i'm going with the same thing i did before i'm, I'm keeping it real thin here uh, nice and transparent again so i can get multiple tones with the same uh, color and again just rotating the figure going around <clears throat> and applying the color. Um, I, but at this point, I'm gonna be a little more selective where I put my light, my sort of lights. I'm gonna try to keep areas sort of between the legs, under the arms, uh, places where there's gonna be, you'd expect there to be a bit more shadow. I'm gonna try and not uh, apply the color there or not apply it as strongly or kind of blend out into those areas, I guess. So you can kind of see me uh, doing that. But again, I'm just sort of working around progressively and sort of uh, carefully just building the color up um, and it, it really is true with this I, I noticed if you keep the paint thin on something like this because your paints are small narrow areas uh, the colors will almost sort of just blend out uh, naturally without any extra effort and just by adding those extra layers later you'll get so you can just get different tones I finished off the wrappings now with just pure white. Again, very thinned down. I mean, uh, I'm not really using it as an edge high highlight here exactly. I mean, I'm applying it to the whole width of the wrapping in most cases, but I'm applying it to very small areas. I'm really, really thinking about where I want there to appear to be a highlight on this model. So you can see how I'm really applying it sort of to the fronts of the legs and the knees, for example, and really the tops of the shoulders and arms uh, and places like that. And I'm, you know, making sure that most of the highlighting work is being done by the earlier layers so this should really be an accent you don't want to apply it to as nearly as much of the sort of the model as you did before just look for those areas where you want sort of almost just look at make it a little light and emphasize it uh, again you can build it up a couple times with several layers again so you know again if you want some really really extreme highlights like on the knees and stuff or whatever you can just add white uh, several times in those places so again even with this you can really get uh, you know different sort of still more sort of different variety in the kind of color that you're applying just by going through the whole layering process now this he's got this sort of I don't know what he's wearing around his neck sort of a sash or something uh, sort of like a priestly raiment I don't even really know I actually agonized an awful lot about over what color to paint this what kind of color palette I wanted for the rest of the figure and I actually kind of finally settled on green here for this particularly uh, I'm base coating it right now with Vallejo black green 
plan ju right now you just want to get a nice even coat also the front of his uh, hat there his crown he's got sort of little sort of decorative element and I'm gonna be base coating that whole area right now with the black green I'm now going to start highlighting up that sort of sash and my first highlight is a mixture of the black green with some uh, part green flat also from Vallejo. Uh, part green flat is a really pretty uh, green shade. I think it's got just the slightest, I don't know, bluish cast. Not very much, but I really like that and I feel like it really works especially for this Egyptian sort of thing. Uh, in terms of the stones, I want some of the stones in his hat to be darker and some to be lighter. So I'm going to kind of alternate from this point on which ones I sort of add brighter highlights to. I'm now uh, highlighting again now with just pure uh, part green flat uh, and just building it up. I started with quite a dark base, so you're going to have to apply quite a few layers of these lighter green shades uh, really to get as much uh, sort of, I don't know, saturation as you're probably going to want. Uh, one thing I found really challenging actually, or I should say I found this p garment to be more challenging than expected just because it's so simple and it has so few wrinkles or definition in it, sort of getting highlights and shadows to show on it uh, take, took a little bit of extra effort. And the kind of the way that I ended up solving that problem of trying to build up extra contrast in my green was I took some uh, blue green now from Vallejo and I mixed it in uh, because blue green by itself really is too blue <laughs> for what I want here. So, but again, I'm just going to keep building on more and more uh, lighter layers. But it, it's really really hard because it's hard to, as I said again, hard kind of to figure out areas that you want to keep darker because pr the light is pretty much hitting everywhere here. There aren't very many wrinkles. So, you know, and, and even blending is tricky because there's there's no obvious thing, area that you want to blend from darker to lighter. So it, it, this was pretty frustrating for me. I just kept adding layers and layers, but then not still not having enough sort of contrast in the area. Again, you can see I'm continuing to build up like different colored green stripes in that sort of panel on the front of his hat with lighter and sort of darker alternating stripes. The darker stripes I basically only sort of highlighted up to level two, whereas the sort of other stripes in the pattern I'm going to keep highlighting with the brighter and brighter greens. I ended up finishing the highlighting job now with pretty much pure um, uh, blue-green here. Uh, even though I said I wasn't going to go that blue, but I ended up uh, playing it pretty thinly here so that it wouldn't tint things too much. Uh, and I found that, that was really the best way to handle this whole situation was really just to go up to a really high uh, highlight so that you just got a more extreme range of color and just to emphasize areas where light we're hitting even though more than some it I mean it gives the whole thing a little bit of a shiny look I guess but at least you get different color in there I even finished with one final highlight I think where I actually mixed some white uh, and beige in there even so I could really really make the kind of contrast uh, super strong Once I settled on this kind of bluish uh, Egyptian green shade, I, I just immediately knew that my other color in this model had to be purple. It just felt right. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm going to be using on the rest of his hat. And also there's these uh, little sort of hieroglyphic -y things etched into his scarf. And I decided I would go ahead and paint them in purple as well. Uh, they're not as hard to paint as you would think, mostly because since they are actually sculpted in there, you kind of can just follow the guidelines. And that makes it a lot, a lot easier. Your brush kind of just slips in the right place. I've just got right now some German camouflage black brown and I've mixed some Vallejo purple in there and that's kind of my base coat on these areas and you know the figures you just want to make sure the paint is thin so that you can sort of get kind of the, the de delicate lines that you need and you know use your number zero brush of course. It probably seems obvious, but my first highlight then on the purple is just going to be the purple by itself. Uh, I, yeah, I, I know, I said maybe a big jump to go right from that base coat up to the purple, but I found that it worked fine. Uh, I did uh, apply the purple highlight to the hieroglyphics. You probably could have waited on this and only gone to a brighter 
shade of purple later on, but I, I wanted to get a little bit of sort of extra berry and some color in, so I'm just kind of going over some areas there too. Uh, but I'm mostly going to be applying this to the hat. Um, this is a big, flat, smooth area again, so you're going to be, have to be a little careful here and, you know, do some blending. Uh, of course, that top, you want to be the brightest and the lightest, and I found there was just a slight crease in the hat, and that gave me a little something where I could add some variance so I could make it look like there's a slight wrinkle there that was darker and then slightly lighter uh, above and below that. Though, uh, with this, this first layer of purple, I pretty much just applied it everywhere. To make a highlight the, for the purple, I basically just took some of the beige uh, and mixed it in. I find that, for whatever reason, yellow is a pretty good color uh, for lightening purple. It does make it a little paler, but it works pretty well. Uh, and so here you can really see where I'm using that line kind of in the seam and the hat or wrinkle, I guess, really to help figure out how to define things. I'm always sort of work starting around the base of the hat uh, and sort of doing an edge highlight there and then kind of building from there and blending a little bit building up some layers uh, and you know going extra bright of course on the top of the hat if, if, if it gets a little bit out of hand you, you lose control you can always go back in with some just plain purple and kind of work over top of it and kind of blend that together uh, because once you've applied that lighter purple and then you put that darker purple over it it tends to read differently you'll get a slightly different tone uh, so that can be a good thing to do I also use this light purple to really more extensively highlight uh, the hieroglyphics on his sash, uh, you know. So whether or not you skipped applying just pure purple here, you should definitely put the bright purple here. And you can see I am making sure I keep some contrast here by leaving uh, the, the light purple out of the really sort of any sort of folds or shadowed, slightly obscured areas in the design. And I ended up taking the purple sort of one shade even lighter with even more of the beige uh, mixed in. And this I applied really as an edge highlight mostly around the sort of the base of the hat and to emphasize that crease in the middle and certainly on the top and around the edge of the top. And again, I relied on the darker purple shades as needed uh, when it got too pale and sort of blended that those back into it to, you know, keep uh, some darker uh, shades in there. Really the last thing left to paint on this figure, there's a little bit of kind of metal gold trim I wanted to do around those stones on the front of his hat. Uh, I base coated this with a mixture of German camouflage black brown and some Vallejo Air gold. Um, gold was really the only choice here as far as I was concerned, it's just so Egyptian feeling somehow. Uh, then I highlighted with uh, pure gold over top and finished with just a tiny hint of uh, Vallejo Air silver to accent sort of the corners and the top. Now after this, you could really call the figure done, but I was kind of looking at it and I was thinking, you know, I want to kind of bring that purple back in some more. I want a little bit more of that color throughout the model, uh, just a hint of it. So I took some uh, Citadel Leviathan Purple Wash here and a fine brush and I very carefully applied it sort of here and there, especially down between the wrappings. Uh, I did not apply it thick. I kept it real thin. Uh, I and especially, even I even let it get onto some of the lighter areas, I should say, but when I did, I really uh, made sure it was very thin, uh, really, uh, it was really evenly applied, and you, you want it to stay subtle, subtle uh, and not get uh, too heavy. And you don't want, and I, like I said, you don't want to put it everywhere, you just want to sort of choose some uh, select areas, maybe areas you think would be a little bit darker, for example. And this just, I don't know, it just adds a little extra something for me to the model. It sort of ties very subtly the sort of more neutral wrappings in together with the, 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 the sort of the hat and sash uh, element. I just found it worked really well and it's one of those things that you seem to be able to get away with more I think in fantasy figures being a little bit more uh, doing things a little, little bit more kind of kooky like this but you know I, I think in the end it really kind of helped uh, just add that little extra to the model. So here's my uh, finished kind of fantasy pulp type mummy figure, kind of just in time, as I said, for uh, the Wargame Soldiers and Strategy uh, monster issue. Uh, he would 
fit into all kinds of scenarios, I think, very well, whether you're going to be doing more fantasy wargaming, kind of old hammer stuff, or, you know, you want more of an action-adventure pulp-type game. This is a great figure for that. Um, I'm really happy with how he came out. As I said, it was a simple figure, but it was a lot of fun to paint. A lot of that was because the wrappings are actually kind of fun, even though they seem annoying. And I liked working with some of the really bright, interesting colors. They're not ones that, you know, I usually get to play with. Uh, and I admit, as I said, I really got inspired by the Iron Maiden mascot here a lot. Um, and that was just because the face sculpt really made me think of him. And in fact, a lot of what I did with the skin tone was at least partially influenced by him. And certainly my desire to make it a light, slightly redder cast. Uh, and probably that also informed a little bit my color choice on his clothes because I don't know I, I sort of got this I don't know I started getting this sort of 80s metal vibe in my head or like 80s music vibe where you had these sort of I don't know sort of these sort of I don't know kind of pastel purples and greens and stuff getting combined with gold and stuff like what I did on this model so if you were going for more Egyptian colors you'd probably actually want to like use red on his hat and some other things so this is less, I guess, historically correct insofar as a model like this is ever going to be historically correct. It's more, I really feel like sort of a pop culture tribute, honestly. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Of course, if you did like it, please um, share with your friends. <laughs> Leave me comments with what you thought. That would be appreciated. And naturally do subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. It's the easiest way to keep up with everything I'm doing and I update pretty much every week. Uh, so that is all for now uh, and I'll see you next time.